guys, in this next video, I'm going to introduce you to a couple of circle theorems. So these are the two I'm going to talk about in the video today. The first one is a triangle in a semicircle. So whenever you see a triangle in half a circle, so this is the diameter here, the angle that touches the circumference here is always 90 degrees. So you just need to remember that. The second one is this one here. So you've got a line called a tangent. So this is just a straight line that just skims, it just touches the circle here in one place. And this, hopefully you know this one already, this is the radius. Whenever you see the tangent and the radius, they always make an angle of 90 degrees with each other. So you've got two angles of 90 degrees that you need to remember in those two different situations. So let's put those into practice. So you can see in the first one, again, we've got a triangle in a semicircle. This is the diameter passing through the center of the circle, which means this angle here is 90 degrees, this one. So we also have to remind ourselves how many degrees there are in a triangle. In a triangle, we have 180 degrees. So this one is 20, this one is 90. So, so far, we've got 110 degrees. So to work out the missing angle, you just need to subtract that from 180. So when you subtract the 110 from 180, you get 70 degrees. So that is the answer to the first one there. Okay, so angle Y is 70 degrees. And if they ask for an explanation, how did you know that was 70? Well, we use two different rules. You would say, we know this angle is 90 degrees because there's a triangle in a semicircle. And also, we use the rule that in a triangle, the angles add up to 180 degrees. So if you were asked to explain how you work that out, you would need to use those two rules in your explanation, as well as the calculations, which are useful too. So in the second question, I can see there's a tangent in this one, and here is the radius. So from the centre of the circle to the circumference, which means we have another angle there, this one, which is 90 degrees. So, the same as before, in a triangle all the degrees add up to 180. So, so far I've got the 90 here, plus the 30 over here, which leaves me with 120. But we need to find this one down here, so subtract the answer from 180. 80 to work out the missing angle. So that means the value of x is 60 degrees. Okay, and just like in the last one here, if you're asked to explain, then you would need to explain the angle that the tangent and the radius make with each other is always 90 degrees, and angles in a triangle add up to 180. So there are a couple of easy examples. I'm going to have a go at some harder ones just now. example here I'm using triangle in a semicircle again you can see there's a triangle in half a circle this is the diameter which means this angle at the top is 90 degrees now we need to use algebra and we need to form an equation in order to work out the value of X in this question we know that in a triangle all the angles add up to 180 degrees so we can use this fact to write down an equation if I add together all of these three angles, so x plus 90 plus 2x, I know that if I add those three together, it should give me 180 degrees. Now, I'm going to simplify this and then solve the equation. Here I've got 1x and I, I'm adding 2x here, so that gives me 3x. And then I've still got plus 90 and 180 is still over on the right hand side. So remember, when you're solving linear equations, you need to reverse all of the operations around x until x is by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting 90, and remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. On the left-hand side, that just goes to 0, and I'm left with 3x. And on the right-hand side, I'm left with 90 degrees. So the last step is to remove that 3, so I need to divide by 3, remember to do the same thing on both sides of the equation. So 3 divided by 3 leaves me with 1x, and on the right hand side, 90 divided by 3 is 30 degrees. So I've solved that equation and I've found the value of this angle here, so this one up here is 30, 
And if they ask you to work out what this angle is as well, well, it's just two lots of x, so two lots of 30, which is 60 degrees. Now, on to the last example down here. So it's using this one over here, the tangent and the radius, except I can see two tangents in this diagram. There's one here and another one here. This is the radius and so is this, which means we've got two angles in this shape here that are equal to 90 degrees, so this one and this one. Now I can see I've got a quadrilateral here. Remember these diagrams aren't to scale, so you can't use a protractor to measure this angle. And you can see really that this doesn't look like 130 degrees just by looking at it. So we just have to use the fact that in a four-sided shape, all the angles add up to 360 degrees. So if you don't know that, I suggest you just try and remember that. So, so far, if I add those angles together, so we've got 130 plus 90 plus 90, which is 180. So if I add those together, so far I've got 310 degrees, which means the remaining angle must be 50. Because if you subtract 310 from 360, it leaves me with 50 degrees. So there are just a couple of circle theorems. There are lots more to learn, but there's two just to get you started.